Susanna Danuta Walters, the director of Women's Gender and Sexual Studies Program and professor of sociology at Northeastern University, became infamous with her 2018 Washington Post op-ed entitled, Why Can't We Hate Men? In a new opinion editorial featured once again in the Washington Post, Dr. Walters is demanding that male candidates get out of the 2020 presidential race. In this podcast, we are responding to Dr. Walters, and we're starting right now. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another podcast. My name is Timothy Alexander. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to learn more about politics, pop culture, and news from a libertarian Republican perspective, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon to stay up to date. Let's get started. Susanna Dunata Walters, writing on the opinion pages of the Washington Post, is taking identity politics to the next level. In an article entitled, If Male Candidates want to show they get it, they should get out. She states, In 2013, Facebook Chief Operating Officer Sheryl Sandberg urged women to lean in to get their power and break through that pesky glass ceiling. Predictably and correctly, feminists argued that leaning in not only left male-dominated corporate structure intact, but also dependent on underpaid female domestic workers to clean and care for children. Both Sandberg's book and the critics of it left actual men out of the analysis. As if leaning in or sorting out the limits of this proposed solution was yet more women's work. I'm reminded of that omission as we head into the Democratic primary season. More women are seeking the party's presidential nomination than ever before. And yet a few white men sit at the top of the polls and rank in big fundraising halls. As candidates such as Senators Camilla Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Kristen Gillibrand, and Amy Klobuchar lean in, maybe it's time for their male competitors to find ways to lean out. Early media coverage of the campaign demonstrates why merely leaning in can't dismantle the double standard and deep structural misogyny women faced. Studies by 538 and my colleagues at Northeastern University found both fewer media mentions of female candidates and also more negative coverage than their male counterparts. Meanwhile, Beto O'Rourke apparently merits multiple profiles, an HBO documentary about his failed Senate run, and an Ann Libowitz photo shoot in Vanity Fair, while Pete Buttigieg got a literally glowing New York Magazine cover profile. Okay, did she just state that the mainstream media outlets, those who habitually act as the propaganda wing of the Democratic Party, are misogynists who are giving the male Democratic candidates more positive news coverage? And what about lumping Pete Buttigieg an openly gay person, and a married gay person, I would add, is just another privileged white guy. I'm kind of curious what she would say if Caitlyn Jenner announced a run for the presidency. Reading through, even though this article is about male privilege overall, she never calls out New York Senator Cory Booker or former HUD Secretary Julian Castro. Why do you think that is? Her article does state that all The male candidates are the problem. Let's continue. They, the males, could refuse to give interviews to news organizations that have practiced gender discrimination in their coverage of the campaigns and say no thanks to magazine covers that curiously feature only them. They could call out the disproportionate attention they receive, as well as the presumption that they are more electable by virtue of their gender and instead point out the fact that the women running have already won multiple races, written many books, and have deep executive and policy experience, claims that could not universally be made of their male counterparts. Male candidates definitely should stop offering a patronizing nod to women through the 
offer of a vice presidential spot on the ticket so they keep on benefiting from the massive affirmative action plan that is male privilege. Naming Stacey Abrams his running mate wouldn't actually fix Joe Biden's problem with women, especially if, as Abrams said, that's not actually a role she wants. Telling women we can play second fiddle is not proof of a commitment to equality. Here is what Dr. Walters truly desires. She wants the male candidates to just stop running for president and start campaigning for the female candidates. The really radical thing for a male candidate to do in 2020 would be to step down and step away, realizing that real gender equality is achieved only when men actively refuse the benefits they receive simply from being born male. Gender and racial equality are not zero-sum games. Everyone is a winner when we have a more diverse and representative government. But we cannot achieve that vision without men taking responsibility for the inordinate space they take up in the media and the candidate field. Now we're starting to get to the truth. But you know what? I think this is a great idea. Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg, Beto O'Rourke, and all the other male privileged candidates, they should just drop out. It is really sad that Dr. Waters and many other Democrats believe female candidates cannot win on their own. This is truly how Democrats seem to think. They promote the idea that women can do anything that men can do, but when everything is said and done, what they really believe is that women are unable to get the job done on their own and with that male stepping aside. What do you think, America? If you enjoyed this podcast, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. If you didn't, thanks for listening this long. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.